Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and I'm bringing you another weapon design video. The last one I made was the Navy Revolver and it seems like quite a few people liked that one. And if you haven't seen it, then I definitely recommend that you check it out after this video. But we're going to be continuing on with that same theme and today our topic is the Lamat Revolver. So basically, I'll just be showing you five really, really cool ways or of the coolest probable unique kind of ways. I don't know how to say it. Basically, five really cool designs for the Lamat Revolver. So if you like this content and you'd like to see more of it, I definitely would like to recommend that right now you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you can actually be notified as content like this comes out in the future. And it's important to do this because as you can see about 95% of the people who watch my videos don't actually subscribe and that's a shame and it hurts me and it hurts you. So let's remedy that now by clicking the subscribe button and ringing that bell. So basically before we get into showing the designs I just like to talk about the gun itself helps people actually know what the guns in the game are based on in real life. This one is pretty simple. The Lamat revolver in the game is based on the Lamat revolver in real life. The Lamat revolver was a 42 or 36 caliber cap and ball black powder revolver invented by Jean Alexander Lamat of New Orleans, which featured an unusual secondary 20 gauge smoothbore barrel capable of firing buckshot. It saw service with the armed forces of the Confederate States of America during the American Civil War of 1861 to 1865, and the army of the government of the National Defense during the Franco Prussian War. So this gun saw two large conflicts. This unique sidearm was also known as the Grape Shot Revolver. It was developed in New Orleans in 1856 by Jean Alexander Lamat whose manufacturing effort was backed by PGT Beauregard, who became a general in the Confederate States Army. Fewer than 100 were made by John Kreider of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1859, including the first 25 prototypes. It is estimated that 2,900 were produced in Liege, Belgium, and Paris, France. The European-made pistols were shipped through Birmingham, England, where they were proofmarked. Approximately 900 revolvers were shipped to the Confederate States Army and 600 to the Confederate States Navy through Bermuda to avoid the southern navy blockade. The distinguishing characteristics of the Lamat revolver is that its nine-shot cylinder revolves around a separate central barrel of a larger caliber than the chambers of the cylinder proper. The central barrel is smoothbore and can function is as a short-barreled shotgun, hence the name grape shot revolver, with the shooter selecting whether to fire from the cylinder or the smoothbore barrel by flipping a lever on the end of the hammer. Flipping the lever up caused the movable striker to fall upon the primer set directly under the hammer, discharging the lower barrel, while leaving it in the standard position would fire the chambers in the cylinder much like any other revolver. Lamette originally chambered his pistol for 40 or 42 caliber revolver bullets with a 60 20 gauge smoothbore barrel and had a jointed ramrod mounted on the side of the frame which was used to load both barrels. Later during the American Civil War a lighter 35 caliber pistol with a 55 caliber or 28 gauge smoothbore barrel was produced but as these were non-standard ammunition sizes 36 or 44 caliber were the most common for contemporary revolver. Lamette owners had to actually cast their own bullets as opposed to being issued them from general military stores. The final models of the Lamat were produced in 36 or 44 caliber in response to these criticisms, but too few of them managed to get past the Union blockade of the South during the Civil War to be of any real use to their army. Whew! Now that we got all that out of the way, you should actually understand that the Lamat was A, a actual real-life weapon and was used by the Confederate States of America in the Civil War, but it was never produced or distributed in large enough quantities to become a large-scale, widely spread weapon. Plus, its unique design and, and complex parts made it more difficult to make and more difficult to maintain, so it never actually saw widespread use. That being said, it's super famous in the Red Dead world, and we're going to be taking a look at it. So, let's just jump into the five designs that I think are the best for the Lamat Revolver. So, the first variant we're going to be looking at today is what I like to call the Blue Boy, and this one is arguably the most iconic of all these, for me at least, because I probably use this design more often than any of the other ones. This one is going to be pretty dang simple to design. We're going to have the short barrel on it, improved sights, improved rifling. We're going to put pearl grips on it, and I've got a doe engraved in there because I think it fits the theme of this very well. Plus, that's the one that my daughters wanted on this gun when I was designing it, so that's why I put the doe on it. And then we're going to have all blued steel for the trigger, sight, hammer, frame, cylinder, and the barrel. Then we're going to want to have make sure it's engraved with the nice, uh, I believe, Victorian. I mean, you can see the design on it, so if I'm saying the wrong one when you're trying to design this, just use the right one. But I think it's the Victorian style, and we're going to do gold in the in that because the gold pops really nicely against the blue and then the contrast between that and the pearl grips just looks incredible. I definitely like this design. It's not flashy but it's very very stylistic. This is a, a very nice looking gun. It looks great. Obviously it performs well because it's the Lamat revolver which is arguably one of if not the best handguns in the entire game. But this looks great without being super gaudy. So that's number 
one, like I said, I think it looks awesome and it's a timeless classic as far as looks go. So let's move on to the next style. So this next one I call the Gilded Age and I think you can probably tell why and this one definitely has a very fancy look. So again, we're gonna have the short barrel, improved sights, improved rifling, pearl grip. This time we're gonna engrave an eagle in the side and we're gonna use the ornamental engravings for the rest of the gun. But we're actually gonna keep the inlay on this one silver. So it's not gonna stick out as much on the barrel or the cylinder and it's gonna look real nice and ornamental against the gold. So then obviously for metals, we're gonna make the trigger, sight, cylinder, and barrel all nickel plated to give it that nice smooth silver look. And then the frame and the hammer are gonna be gold. So this is a two-toned gun split kind of right down the middle with the top half being mostly silver and the bottom half being mostly gold. I think it looks really, really good. A, this two-toned look is pretty famous in uh, where you see a lot of not only historical, but famous from media, people who really, really like to customize their guns. They'll have, for some reason, the top half will be one color and the bottom half will be the other color. Normally, I don't like that, but on this revolver with these two colors, I think it actually looks really, really good. And now you could swap probably the same pattern out with any two colors and really like how it looks, but I think that this color combination looks real fancy and real cool. So this is something that I would associate with maybe a, a real wealthy gunslinger, bounty hunter, or even a wealthy businessman. So this can go for a lot of different play styles. And honestly, like I said, it's one of the nicest looking patterns that you can make for the Lamat. So that's number two. Let's move on to number three. So here at number three, we have what I like to call the Brass Tax Revolver. And obviously I like that because it's a cool name and anyone who thinks it's not is an idiot. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, so for style on this one, we're going to give it the short barrel, improved sights, improved rifling, uh, ironwood grips. And for the ironwood grips, we're going to put a mahogany varnish on it to give it a nice dark, even look to it. Then I engraved a buck into the side. Then we're going to have the ornamental engraving with brass inlay. And that's very important that you do it right. So don't screw it up under pain of death. So then for the colors of this gun, we're going to have the trigger, sight, hammer, and cylinder are all going to be brass and the barrel and frame are going to be blackened steel. This all contrasts very, very nicely to make a kind of dark, I like to think of this one as a maybe a soldier or a gunslinger, someone, or even maybe, uh, maybe a bounty hunter, but more like a marshal, that sort of a build. I really like the contrast between the brass and the black and the dark grips on this. I think it makes it look a lot sharper than just maybe solid black wood, because I've seen quite a few people going with the solid black look on the Lamat. And while yes, that looks pretty decent, I think this looks better. Uh, the brass is not flashy. It's not even as flashy as maybe nickel plating would be because A, brass was actually used quite a bit on firearms back in the day. So that's why this is a, I think, just an excellent build for the Lamat revolver. And like I said, with that brass inlay in the engravings on the black barrel, it just helps it pop without, again, looking flashy or gaudy in any way. And even the brass inlay on the brass cylinder, I think, looks really cool because there's a slight difference in its sheen, whereas the, the cylinder is kind of a flat brass, the inlay is kind of more shiny and metallic. I think it even stands out really nicely on there and then you have the brass trigger and brass hammer contrasting even more against that black frame so honestly really really cool look I think uh, designs like this are severely underrated, and I think they help a lot with a lot of different role play and outfits, different feels that you want to go for. I think this one helps fill in the gaps where some other guns just feel gaudy and ostentatious. So that's uh, number three. Let's move on to number four. All right, and so number four, we have just the Pistolero, uh, and I know that's very broad, but I think this fits really well. So what I'm kind of picturing in my mind when I made this, I, I think it was an episode of Hell on Wheels where you had some guy who was a criminal of some sort he had pissed off some people down south of the border in mexico and so they came up chasing after him and they had some really fancy looking silver guns so that's kind of what was sticking out in my head and uh that's what i designed this roughly after obviously they were using uh colt single action army revolvers not lamats but i think it works really well with the lamats so what we're going to do is again like usual improved sights improved rifling short barrel then we're going to give this one the ebony grip and we're going to carve a snake into it and then we're going to give it the art nouveau engraving with the gold inlay which is going to contrast really nice on our metal suit. Then the barrel, cylinder, frame, and hammer are all going to be nickel plated and the sight and the trigger are going to be gold just for a tiny bit of two-toned metal contrast. So I definitely like this design. I think it's very understated but also very fancy. If, if you can be both, this gun is the way to go. So that's number four. Let's move on to the final design at number five. And then finally uh, our fifth design on here. I'm just going to call this one the brass ring because honestly I didn't have anything else to call it but it's got some brass on it. I couldn't come up with a good name. Maybe, maybe that's a good 
Comet Fruity Leaf is maybe a better name for this design. <laughs> Sometimes they're hard to come up with and you don't want to use the same ones over and over again. But anyway, so for this one, we're going to, again, we're going to go with the uh, improved sights, improved rifling, short barrel. This time we're going to stick with the basic wood grips and we're going to give that a cherry wood uh, varnish because that looks very nice on it. And then the cougar carving goes into that. And then for the engravings, we're going to go with full Baroque engravings with brass inlay. For the metals, we're going to split it right down the center, have the barrel, cylinder, and frame are all going to be brown steel, and then brass for the hammer, sight, and the trigger. So mostly browned with brass accents. That browned and brass combination is seriously underrated in the game. And so the brown steel, I think, looks great, and the brass is one of the best colors to pair with it because it just pops really well without looking gaudy at all. So yeah, that is the final design that I have for the Lamat revolvers. So that's actually where we're going to end today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, as always, I'll invite you to leave a, a like on the video just to show that it's a great video. I mean, I already know it is, and you already know it is, but now you got to show basically everyone else in the world. And also, like I've said, I would definitely invite you to leave a comment down below, whether that's maybe an improvement for one of my designs or your own separate design that you don't think I covered, but you think is at least as cool as any of the ones I showed. That would all be great. To, to be left on in the comments section. And of course, as usual, just one more time, I want to talk on subscriptions. Uh, to grow, my channel definitely needs subscriptions. And if you're a fan of Red Dead Redemption or other awesome open world games like it that I'm likely to enjoy, definitely subscribe to the channel because this is my bread and butter for content. I enjoy making videos like this and I enjoy playing games like this. So if you enjoy watching videos like this and playing games like this, then this channel is kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? So with all that in mind, thanks for watching and have a nice day and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.